Becoming a racing driver is many a boy's dream, and this year Mike Channel has been living it. We watched him fight the rain in Rockingham and spin at Snetterton. We've lived through the mechanical woes at Silverstone, and now we have come to the conclusion of what has been Mike's ambition since he was a kid. So we're here, finally, on the final day of my racing season, and what better place to be at than Brands Hatch, which is my home circuit. Uh, I've got a bunch of family and friends coming to watch me here, and it's also the Brands GP circuit, which is probably one of the most beautiful circuits in the UK. Some really fast right-handers out there. I've got to admit, I was pretty conservative in qualifying. I couldn't quite get out of my head just how many of my friends and family I've invited to see me race, and uh, if you've been following the the series as a whole, you'll know that I need to get three laps in in qualifying before I'm allowed to race. I don't know if you've noticed, it was absolutely baking here. It's quite slippery actually out there. I think probably there's a bit of surface rubber that's being melted by the track temperature. Um, so it feels greasier than it did yesterday in testing. So I'm starting second to last on the grid, which is not very good, uh, but I do feel like I'll be able to chase down some of the guys in front. I've tended to go better in the races than I have in qualifying this season and I'm hoping that will continue into this final race. Hope to put some moves on some people and do a bit of, uh, bit of battling. It is amazing how quickly this uh, final race weekend of the season has come around. I think it's going to be a bit difficult once this is over to, to let it go. But it's not over yet. Ahead of him are two more races and with the sun baking down and his friends and family all cheering him on from trackside, the lights go out and it's time to race. I'm absolutely buzzing after race one here at Brands Hatch. I've matched my best result of the season, which is eighth, which I had at Snetterton, so I'm really, really pleased with that. I don't know whether it's the heat affecting people or just that sort of end of term feeling, but there were a lot of spinners, loads of accidents in front of me, and I managed to get a pretty good start. We made some good overtakes, which is what I was sort of hoping for. But then I was able to kind of hold my position for quite a lot of the race. I was in seventh, it was a safety car, and to be honest, I would have been quite happy for it to end under the safety car, because I was sitting in, in seventh. And then towards the end of the race, I just, I overcooked it a bit into uh, the corner onto the big back straight onto the GP circuit and um, if you mess that corner up you are compromised all the way down the straight so I was a sitting duck and unfortunately the guy in eighth got past me but I'm still super super satisfied lots of really hard racing kept it on the island which a lot of people didn't do and matched my best result of the season I'm now super hyped for the final race of the season uh, my Finishing position of eighth carries over to my grid position, so I'm going to be starting from eighth. Going to try and get another really good start if I can, and maybe uh, maybe try another cheeky move up into Druids like I did last time. It seemed to work pretty well last time. There is still one more race left for this weekend, but Mike has already started thinking about what could be next after this entry-level series. So I'm here with Tom Sibley of Zentech Motorsport. He's running in the G40 Cup, which would be my next step if I were to continue and do another season next year after the GRDC. So the car's pretty similar, but some changes to the suspension and different tires, right? Upgrade the suspension, semi-slick tires. So the cars lap somewhere between two to four seconds quicker. And it's, it's a bit more competitive as well now. Yeah. Pretty much everyone on the grid runs with the team because it, it's, there's too much workload to do because we have quali in three races mm. on a weekend in opposed to what you guys had with a quali in two races and one of the races is, is over in Spa. It was a logistical challenge but it was absolutely incredible not only a highlight of the year but you know of a lifetime yeah to, absolutely. to go up over Rouge was just incredible. I think that's the thing you know certainly for me GRDC has been about wish fulfillment it's a kind of amazing that we can go from basically quite entry level sort of motorsport and go to these huge circuits. Yeah absolutely and not only that but we're on the, the calendar with the British GT as well yeah. which is you know the what, the second biggest race series in the UK behind the touring cars. Yeah, yeah. So to have the race day support as well on the Sunday when everyone comes to watch the GTs, it's, you know, the crowds are huge. You came through the GRDC mm -hmm. uh, and you've sort of made the leap to G40 Cup. How has it sort of differed? What have been the key sort of differences in terms of the way you've approached it? I think working with the team was a huge difference really. You know, learning how to give feedback to your engineers. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it gives an extra element which you know you might not necessarily have doing the GRDC. Did a bunch of your year of GRDC graduate to the cup as well? Do you see a lot of the guys you raced against? I think the majority of it. I think there was about 15, mm. probably a similar amount to what you had. I think all bar about two or three cars. Mm. Everyone still loved it just as much as they did last year. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for me to walk away from it, that's for sure. You have to come back for a few rounds, won't you? Yeah, I think so, maybe a one-off or two. All right, <laughs> cheers Tom. No worries. 
so I'm trying to get myself psyched up for uh, race two. I would say over the course of the season, my race twos have never been quite as good as my race ones. These guys who I had behind me in race one, a lot of them were much, much faster than me. So in terms of absolute lap time, they've got the run on me. So it's about just defending hard and defending slows you down. And if you, you're you not taking your usual lines, so it's, you know, there's just so much to think about. And this is the last race. A lot of people aren't gonna be in the same car next year. So I'm not gonna be that worried about binning it. So. Um, I think some of the battles at the front are going to get pretty intense. So although I had a dreadful weekend at Silverstone and really the gap to Adam Hay Nichols, who was my championship rival up until that point, uh, just expanded massively, he spun off in race one. So he finished towards the back of the grid. So actually, I might actually be on for uh, a good championship position, but I don't want to look at it. So you know when the, you hear Formula One drivers saying, yeah, I don't want to think about the championship right now. I really don't want to know. I don't want to look at the points. I don't know how much many points I got from that race. I just think I might be back in the hunt. If I can have a strong race too, might be able to catch Adam. Let's see how I get on. It's been a hot summer, full of highs and lows, but this is the last time Mike will get to drive his car competitively. A lifetime of dreaming and years of planning have all led to here and now. Okay, I finished my second race. Not quite as intense as the first one, but still pretty busy, um, particularly at the start. Uh, Paddock Hill Bend, I lost a load of places. So I was feeling a little bit demoralized, but I thought I'd just try and keep my pace and you know wait for other people to make mistakes. And they did, basically. Uh, one of the other guys, Robin, unfortunately went into the gravel. I think Adam, my chief championship rival, had mechanical issues because I saw him going slow out the back of the circuit. So I don't know what the state of the championship is. I, I feel bad if that's how it's been decided, but then I had technical problems at Silverstone and I believe the phrase is, that's motorsports. But I'll go and catch up with Adam anyway and shake his hand. We've had some wicked battles. The GRDC has just been absolutely incredible. You know, I was expecting to enjoy the on-track stuff. I think that was, that's obviously the priority. That's why, why you spend your money. But just the entire experience has been amazing. It's been amazing being part of the British GT support package. You know, there are loads of people here watching you race, which is just a bizarre feeling. It would have been so easy for a bunch of blokes getting together uh, to kind of take the mickey out of each other. But actually, it's, everyone's been wanting everyone to do well and everyone's disappointed when people do badly. And it, it's just a really nice vibe. And I've just had the best season. It's been a dream come true. It's been everything I hoped it would be. And we've had lows. You know, that accident at Castle Coombe was, was bad. But I look back at the driver I was back then and I look at the driver I am now and I just set my fastest lap of the weekend in race two. The prog progression has just been incredible. Um, so I feel like I've developed as a driver the most amazing memories that will last a lifetime. And um, as for my plans next year, I mean, I'm gonna keep hold of the car. Um, it's gonna be really difficult to walk away from this experience um, and you know, not being part of this amazing traveling circus that is the motorsport paddock with all the familiar faces. And you know, my friends are gonna be moving on to different uh, series and things like that it's gonna be really difficult to let go of it so i may may do some one-off races i've had a good weekend here i'd love to go back to snetterton and keep improving there i'd also quite like to get into a bit of endurance racing i've had my head turned a bit by 24-hour races so maybe that's my next step we'll see i would absolutely recommend doing this if you've ever dreamed about it if you if you watch motorsport on tv if you like cars if you like driving you know track days are brilliant but there's nothing quite like racing and you know if GRDC is not for you. There are other championships out there. You know, we've had Caterhams out here. We've had Classics. There's the C1 Cup, which looks brilliant. For me, my, my experience, these cars, everything has just been fantastic. If, you, if you've ever dreamed of it, just do it. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. It's a proper wish fulfillment. Get out there. I hope to see you on the grid. Motorsport can easily seem obtainable, and it's never a cheap hobby. But what Mike has shown us is that if you have passion and you're willing to work hard, it can be possible to get on that very first rung of the ladder and at the very least for one season live out that childhood dream. There may not be thousands of fans cheering you on from the stands or millions of viewers watching on TV. It won't have the glamour of an F1 race weekend. But you can tell from the look on Mike's face every single time he took that car out on track that every fibre of his body felt more alive than it ever had. 
And who knows where it can lead to from here? Racing is a bug that sets in hard and is tough to shift. I don't think it will be long before Mike is back for more. <laughs>